it's a pleasure to be celebrating 85 years of excellence and 50 years at Northeastern for our School of Pharmacy. This school has, an, on all domains, come so far. My uncle came to this country in 1920, and he became a pharmacist in 1921, and he was teaching students how to take the board exam. When I came here, I asked him, how did you project that this something like this you can do, you can make a school out of study from nothing? And he did, he says, I knew from day one that I would be successful because I had a determination and a vision. In 1949, changed the name to, from Boston School of Pharmacy to New England College of Pharmacy. Well, it was on Beacon Hill on Mount Vernon Street. It was a, just a uh, small school, which I enjoyed because uh, you knew everyone in, from the freshman class to the senior class. It was a very small, boutique-type college. In 1962, Northeastern University brought on the New England College of Pharmacy. They merged, and what we've seen since then is a change in the duration of study for the pharmacy program, the implementation of the co-op program that had been around for many years, and then an amazing transformation in the research enterprise. Each year we've moved up in the rankings by virtue of the amount of funding that we bring in, the nature of the research that we do grows every year, and I often say, well, we're well poised to be leaders in drug discovery and drug delivery, but we're not just poised anymore. We're there. We are the leaders. People look to us for the kind of work that we're doing here. We are a comprehensive research institution looking at cancer nanotechnology. The ultimate goal is to make sure that the drugs that we are trying to uh, get to patients are delivered in the appropriate way, uh, that they are only targeting diseased cells and sparing healthy cells. When you look at all the different effort that has been taken to eradicate cancer and to contain cancer, it's been one of the most challenging diseases of our generation. I'm fascinated by the fact that we can take this information that we are gathering from the laboratory and from clinical studies and how we can apply them to patients, really make this a truly translational aspect. There's still a need in the community of people who are struggling on day-to-day -day monitoring with diabetes. Finger prick methods are not only somewhat invasive, but they're a single point in time. What we're trying to do is make a system that could be worn on board in a less invasive manner my lab makes novel nanosensors, which are small polymer spheres that fluoresce. What we do is take these sensors and embed them in the skin, a lot like a tattoo, and we can read the fluorescence level through the skin and monitor glucose, and we can use it as a tool for people with diabetes to measure their sugar levels. A lot of the research that some of my colleagues are doing is based on how can we get that drug to that particular site to do what we wanted to do, but to not hurt anything else. Once that product is developed, I'm dealing with it from more of a patient-centric focus, which is now in this patient sitting in front of me, I need to explain to them how this is gonna work, what it's gonna do, and what are some of the side effects and things to watch out for. Taking it from the bench all the way to the bedside with the patient. That's the continuum within medicine, and we're all just in different parts of that continuum. Our students have exposure to world-class scientists who are at the cutting edge of the fields of pharmacy. They are able to engage in programs of research, participate in research co-ops, and through their co-ops, meet some of the world's leaders in this area. It's very exciting. I did get to work in a nanotechnology-based industry. The whole experience was mind-opening. It made me more professional in my approach and made me realize that the true potential of the kind of work that I'm doing. I can't say enough about getting that real world experience because if you can connect what's happening with a patient that you saw while you were on co-op with something with a disease state that you're learning about in the classroom, that's what makes you remember. Today it's a different type of uh, pharmacy school and these students are really at the forefront of breaking through with new products in biotechnology, new products in pharmaceuticals. I think the future is absolutely brilliant and I, I can't imagine you know, a better place to be than Boston and at, at Northeastern. The School of Pharmacy is doing just a remarkable amount of work, both on the practice side as well as on the science side. We know that as we develop new molecules, new bioanalytics, that the future of healthcare will be very much influenced by what happens in pharmacy and we know that we're going to play a very important role.
So I think about this rich history and what we learn from it and the people who made such a difference. And many of them are still here with us, celebrating with us, giving us their ideas, and enjoying those warm memories of what it was like to be at the New England College of Pharmacy and at the School of Pharmacy at Northeastern University. By virtue of the kind of university we're in, being in a very strong health sciences college with great emphasis on interprofessional learning, we've never been in a better position to shape the future.